Hello viewers and welcome to Noble Tech. On today's video we'll be looking at the LilyGo TMBED CC1101. Today I'll be diving into one of the most exciting development boards in the radio frequency and cybersecurity space. The LilyGo TMBED CC1101 is running the powerful Bruce predatory firmware. If you're into sub gigahertz experimentation, signal sniffing, or just want a flipper zero style experience with more flexibility given that it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, this board is a game changer. We'll cover everything from hardware overview, flashing Bruce firmware, and I was hoping to give you a live RFID demonstration, but unfortunately the LilyGo TMBED CC1101 is not compatible with the RFID frequency 125Hz. Therefore, it's not compatible with the T5577 cards that I did get for demonstration. Looking at the hardware, the TMBED is built around the ESP32-S3 and it's packed with features. Features include sub-gigahertz radio frequency via the CC1101 transceiver, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, infrared transmitter and receiver, NFC capabilities, USB-C for power and flashing, a rotary encoder for navigation, as you can see there, and it's got a bright TFT display. It's one of the better displays that I've seen in devices recently. And it also has a magnetic back cover for convenient access to the battery. The TM bed is compact, pocketable, and feels solid in the hand. The encoder is tactile and the screen is crisp, perfect for field use. So what is Bruce Firmware? Bruce Firmware, or Bruce Predatory Firmware, is an open source multi-protocol toolkit designed for ESP32 based boards. Think of it as a modular hacking suite. It supports radio frequency signal transmission and reception, infrared blasting and sniffing, NFC reading and emulation, Wi-Fi deauthentication and probe attacks. Bluetooth scanning and spoofing, and also bad USB, but only on supported boards. On the TMBED CC1101, Bruce unlocks the full potential of the CC1101 chip, allowing you to interact with garage remotes, IoT devices, and more, all within legal and ethical boundaries, of course. Now, as it happens, on the day that I decided to record this video, we also got a brand new, fresh update for the Bruce firmware, so I'm going to run you through the update for that. Now, unfortunately, I probably won't be able to show you the finicky bit on screen because uh, I'm using a very short USB cable to guarantee that it works. It's the USB cable that comes with the Flipper Zero. But essentially, to update Bruce, we're going to use the online flasher from the Bruce website. And uh, to do this, you first have to put it in a mode for it to be flashed. And it's a little bit tricky. So to update the TM bed, the first thing you have to do is simultaneously hold the rotary button whilst also pressing the reset button. Now, if I remember correctly where the reset button is, you just see it there underneath the battery. So you have to press down the button on the inside there, the reset button, while simultaneously holding the rotary button and then plug in the device. So back with you in just a moment. So once you have simultaneously held down the reset button and the rotary button at the same time whilst plugging in the USB, we now go onto the Bruce website, as you can see, and we click on install now. Now, please make sure to use either Chrome or Edge as your browser of choice for this, as I do not believe it works with some other browsers. So we want to select the latest release and we want to select LilyGo. Now we want to select the TMBED CC1101. Choose how to install firmware. Connect a device. As you can see, it comes up now as COM14. It might be different on your system depending on what COM it's allocated. Now it gives us the option for device dashboard, install LilyGo TMBED CC1101 or logs and console. We're going to select install. And now it will ask if we want to erase the device before we install. We absolutely do. We select the check erase device. Then we click on next. Do you want to install LilyGo TMBED CC1101? All existing data will be erased from your device. Install. Now 
As you can see, my attempt at plugging it in while simultaneously pressing both buttons didn't work. Let's try that again. So let's try this again. I tried it again holding the reset button down properly this time, and now when I click connect to device, we can see COM14 paired, we click connect. Again, we select install LilyGo T-Embed CC1101, and we select erase device. Click install. Now this process may take a moment, Now it's wrapping up. Excellent, now the installation is complete. We click on next and we are done. So we exit out of that and now we get our device. So the first thing we're going to have to do is plug the battery back in. As you may have noticed, I did not take the battery out completely as I like to keep the glue in place. So I just work around that, which made it a bit trickier to hit the reset button. But now if I take the, I'm using uh, very fine tweezers here. Now you're going to watch me struggle to get this back in place. Luckily with the magic of editing, I can make this look a lot quicker. And there we go, we've got the socket back in place. And I just use the blunt end to push that back in without breaking anything. And there we go. We have the latest version of Bruce. And this is 1.8.5. Or in here it says 1.11. Interesting. We have Ethernet now. And we have successfully updated the Bruce firmware on the LilyGo T-Embed CC1101. And the latest Bruce update includes the new Ethernet menu option. Very interesting. In some instances, you may need to hit the reset button again to get the device to boot. Let's walk through the interface. Bruce is menu driven and navigated using the rotary encoder. You'll see categories like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet, Radio Frequency, RFID, Infrared, FM Radio, this device is not compatible with that option. We've got the Files menu, and we've got GPS. Again, this device is not compatible with that option unless you add a GPS module yourself. And NRF24. Now, this device in particular does not have NRF24 built in. But the newer model, the CC1101 Plus, does have an NRF24 module. I do not have that one to show you, but hopefully I'll get that one day in the future. We also have JS Interpreter and others, which includes things like QR codes, a little game called Megalodon, and a microphone spectrum. And you can also record from the microphone. It's not terrible, it's not good. And we've also got the bad USB option in here. Looking through the menu options, starting with Wi-Fi, we can see that we have Connect Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Access Point, Wi-Fi Attacks, Evil Portal, Listen TCP, Client TCP, Telnet, SSH, DPWO, Sniffers, Scan Hosts, WireGuard, and Bruce Gotchi. Now, Bruce Gotchi is a Bruce version of the Pona Gotchi, and it works pretty well. We also have Configuration, and back to the main menu. Looking over at Bluetooth, we have media commands, Bluetooth scan, iBeacon, bad Bluetooth, Bluetooth keyboard, Apple juice, sour Apple, Windows spam, Samsung spam, Android spam, and spam all, as well as spam custom. We also have Ninebot, and then back to the main menu. Next, we have Ethernet, which has been newly released in the latest version of Bruce. And in here we have the option to scan hosts, DHCP starvation, MAC flooding, and then back to the main menu. We also have radio frequency, which supports the CC1101 module, where we can scan copy, record raw, custom sub gigahertz, spectrum, 
square wave spectrum, and spectrogram, as well as listen, brute force, JAMA, ITMT, JAMA full, so I'm presuming that's JAMA intermediate, JAMA full, config, and then back to the main menu. Next we have RFID. Now from experimentation, I do not believe that the TMBED CC1101 is compatible with 125 kHz, which means it didn't work with the T5577 cards that I did get for demonstration, as I mentioned earlier, but we are able to scan, read, and write NFC. Unfortunately, it is unable to emulate NFC, but it can scan, read, and write. Next up, we have infrared, where we can both transmit and receive. So we have TV be gone, custom infrared, infrared read, and infrared jammer, as well as config. Going back to the main menu, we also have FM, which isn't compatible with this device, as I mentioned earlier. And we have files, which gives us SD card, little FS, which is the built-in memory. We also have web UI and mass storage. We have GPS, which gives you options like war driving, GPS tracker, config. But unfortunately, there is no GPS module in this device as standard, so it isn't compatible with this option yet. But you can add, via the GPIO ports underneath, a GPS module. Potentially, you could add the one from M5 stack. And then we have the NRF24 module again, which isn't compatible. We have JavaScript interpreter, which gives us the option to load JavaScript. And then we have others which includes QR codes, the game Megalodon, microphone spectrum, microphone record, and bad USB as well as bad USB keyboard. And we have a clicker, open haystack, an interpreter, eye button, and a timer. We also have a clock. The time is not currently correct. And we have connect option for sending files, receiving files, send commands, receive commands, and then back to the main menu. And then we have config for brightness, dim time, orientation, UI color, and UI theme, as well as Insta Boot, LED color, LED effect, LED brightness, LED blink on and off, sound on and off, sound volume, startup Wi-Fi, startup app, hide show apps, network credentials, clock, sleep, factory reset, restart, turn off, deep sleep, about, and then back to the main menu. And that's a quick run through through the menu options. Now, one thing I didn't show you before, if I just turn off my device quickly, I'll put it into deep sleep anyway. If I now click this back on, you can add a custom GIF and you can also add custom themes. Now, since the update, I've only just realized it's erased my custom GIF there. So I'll have to reinstall that, but you can get themes, including themes created by ghost rats. Uh, you can go over to his YouTube channel to find links there, or go to his Discord, which I'll have a link in the description. Uh, you often find me there chatting away, so if you want to come have a chat or say hello, join Ghost Strat's Discord. So, is the LilyGo TMBED CC1101 running Bruce firmware worth it? Absolutely. For around $40 to $60, you get a compact, multi-protocol hacking toolkit that rivals more expensive devices. It's perfect for ethical hackers, radio frequency enthusiasts, makers and tinkerers, and Flipper Zero fans who want more control. Also to note, it's much cheaper than the Flipper Zero. Bruce firmware is actively developed, and the community is growing. If you're into wireless experimentation, this combo is a must-have. Thank you for watching. Drop a comment if you want a deeper dive into NFC tools or IR cloning. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay curious.